before anyone starts talking about legality or freedom of speech or whatever, mm -hmm. it is well within YouTube's rights to have these policies they in can their do terms it. of service. And we all understand that they want ad revenue to fund server costs and maximize profits. Sure. Let's not pretend that they're bleeding money here, though. And inversely, the right to use ad blockers also exists. In Germany, you have multiple court cases outright saying that ad blockers are legal. Meanwhile, I'm not an attorney, but you do have some fundamental concepts of law that an actual legal expert might use to say that an express contract or an implied contract is not inherently formed or enforceable just because you visit a website and agree to the terms. Well, of course it's not enforceable because you don't know the mental state of the person that clicked the button. There's no witness to the contract. Like, obviously, a TOS isn't binding. The only time where the TOS was binding was, I think, a case that... Yeah, no notary, there's nothing like that. If he was high, if somebody was underage, etc., they can change TOS, yeah. Uh, that of course if you know anything about contract law which i don't really know a lot about it but at least i know that yeah you also have historical cases that aren't inherently about ad blocking mm -hmm. but are kind of in the same area such as cases regarding property modification website click wrappers or even the sony betamax supreme court case where the judge ruled that recording a program i was about to say the betamax what the fuck yeah that was before vhs like, my dad told me about Betamax. And I'm old! And fast-forwarding through the commercials is legal. Fun fact, some DVRs and VCRs actually have the ability to automatically detect and skip commercials. Yeah. So Sponsor Block has kind of been around for decades now. It has been. For the sake of proper transparency, though, how an ad is circumvented can still be an issue in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. And there's also plenty of ways to design a website so that a contract is much more enforceable but we'll yep. lead the actual discussion of legal hypotheticals to an actual attorney. Right. Back to what I am qualified to say, though. Certain data privacy laws, such as the GDPR, can make certain ad block detection methods illegal. And even government agencies, such as the FBI, say you should be using them for your own safety. And now let's talk about the Cobra effect, a phenomenon that many of you have witnessed throughout history, but may not have known about as a defined concept. The Cobra effect is essentially when someone tries to fix a problem, but their efforts either end up making the problem worse or creating a new problem entirely. The alleged origin story was that back in the 1900s, when yeah, India kids, uh, like it, the was still under British rule, India had a Cobra problem. The British came up with a solution of offering a bounty on dead Cobras oh. to encourage the residents to kill them and reduce the population. Instead, the residents just began breeding the cobras so that they could easily kill them and collect the bounty. Smart. Then when the British caught on and canceled the program, all the cobras being bred were released into the wild, and then the cobra population was actually higher than before the program started. Smart, yeah. Now, I say alleged because, due to the fact that most of history is lost to time, we don't have definitive proof that this event ever happened. But the name Cobra Effect still stuck, and the concept is very much real. So I want you to keep it in mind when is you Is there any example of this concept actually happening in a way that's verifiable, or is this just a hypothetical based on a story that's not verifiable? Yeah, like, we're, we're, like I, I, it would be nice to have some examples of this. About the never-ending battle between ads and ad blockers. Many advertising companies are actually okay with ad blockers because they know that most of those people are never actually ads. going to click on the ads served to them. And also keep in mind, the reason why advertising companies are okay with ad blockers is also because if you if you watch a video and you have an ad blocker on, the advertiser doesn't have to pay for that. So that means that every single time that happens, like you're effectively, so let's say if you take the general population and you say a person is 1% likely to buy something whenever they see an ad on YouTube, the 30% population of the, uh, of the people that are using ad block, let's say, those people are even lower than 1%. So you're actually getting a higher return on investment if you're only advertising to the people that are uh, are not using ad blocker yeah it's, it's actually a very smart thing for advertisers to say this so we're saving the advertisers money yeah yes so the remaining people who don't use ad blockers who see the ad they're more likely to actually click it because and then, like people that aren't using ad blockers have a higher conversion rate and that higher click-through rate is better for the advertisers, which allows the website owners to in turn go right. look at our success rate to attract more people to advertise with them. 
by forcing a large population of people who are not only never going to click an ad, but are never going to pay for YouTube Premium to now view the ads, then that means that the click-through rate is going to decrease, and then the companies are going to pull out and advertise elsewhere because their campaigns are not as effective anymore. You also have to- That's not true. They would just pay less money. Uh, so, I mean, like, of course, advertisers, they, like, where would they go if everywhere is blocking ads? Or, sorry, is forcing people to have ads. Like, yeah, they, they would just pay less money. Because they're paying based off of conversions or something like that, rather than impressions. Impressions are people seeing it, conversions are people buying it. Except the reality that there are many more options besides pay with your time or pay with your money. There's always going to be other solutions such as take your time elsewhere or find any other alternative solution. In the comments section of that same Reddit thread, one user posted a link to a website called YouTube, spelled differently. This is a mirrored version of the main YouTube site that doesn't have any advertisements on it. I, along with many other people, would have never known this website ever existed if it wasn't for YouTube taking such an aggressive anti-ad blocker stance. Additionally, YouTube's new experiment caused me to discover a browser add-on called Ad Nauseam. This works by blocking your ads like normal, but in the background it clicks every single one of them. And this is so that advertisers can't build a profile on you because it looks like you just click every single ad. But this does end up meaning that the advertisers are getting their money wasted because all of their ads are being clicked but not actually viewed. So yeah. if YouTube begins to more aggressively enforce their anti-ad block stance, the ad block developers aren't just going to go, I guess I'll pack my bags and head home then. They're going to find a way to one-up it and then we might- I don't think that's going to happen. Because I can almost guarantee you that they could probably sue them for that. And I guarantee you that if somebody is an add-on developer and there's a chance that they're going to get sued by, like, Walmart, they're going to shut that add-on down in a second. They're not even going to try to fight that. See more ad blockers that work just like this, so that they're spoofing YouTube into thinking you've allowed ads by clicking them, but then the ads aren't actually being served and it's going to waste more and more advertiser money, mm -hmm. which makes their campaigns less effective and causes less of them to want to advertise with YouTube. And even if- Yeah, and somebody does say it depends on country jurisdiction, though. That's true. Particular method does eventually become illegal. It's not really going to matter because of how few changes you have to actually make to make it legal again. Mm -hmm. One pretty recent gray area example, like sure even if again. a particular method does eventually become illegal, it's not really going to matter because of how few changes you have to actually make to make it legal again. Mm -hmm. One pretty recent gray area example I can think of is with YouTube Vanced. This What's was this? a third party YouTube APK for Android that enabled ad block and sponsor block, but it was discontinued due to legal threats. And this was likely because it also enabled certain premium features such as the pop out window or the ability to listen to a video, even when your phone screen was powered off. Huh. And now you have the spiritual successor YouTube revanced. And the main loophole here is that instead of providing you with a third party APK, it just kind of teaches you how to build your own mod yourself. So okay. realistically speaking, the whack-a-mole game is just never going to go away. I, I think that it will. And the reason why is that every single time that you do something like this, you reduce the amount of people that are willing to go that extra step. So like if you make it harder for somebody to use ad blocker, eventually the annoyance of ads will be the, 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 the lesser of two evils. When it comes to people and advertisements as a whole. Not, no, I, I, I do think so. And the reason why I think so is because I've had a YouTube channel for 10 years and I've seen how ad block changes and the amount of people that watch ads versus don't watch ads. And more people watch ads now than used to watch ads. And the biggest reason for that is because of mobile. Now, are there ways to block ads on mobile? Yes, they are. But are, there more, are they more annoying to do? Yes. So if you make ad blocking more inconvenient, you will reduce the amount of people that use ad block. There is, I mean, like you just look at what's happened. Many people are actually okay with advertisements, but only to a reasonable extent. You have apps such as Duolingo that serves you an ad at the end of each lesson. But people also voluntarily choose to view a second unskippable ad for a small reward within the app. Many of my fellow Americans probably watch the Super Bowl and have a favorite Super Bowl ad that you'll even go onto YouTube to watch. Sure, there's funny Meanwhile, ads. One of my all-time favorite ads was for a Wii game back in 2008, Wario Land Shake It. As you watch the trailer, the entire web page would break apart and you could even drag elements of it around afterwards. That's cool. You can't do it anymore on the modern YouTube web page, but thankfully users such as Video Game Clip Collect and Nuke JP have preserved this ad. So yeah, think that's about badass. That 
I'm talking about how I'm glad that an ad was preserved. I'm not the only person who's ever said that. Oh, yeah. Because you have entire compilations of commercials on YouTube with millions of views and millions of positive comments. So if people tolerate ads and even have ads that they like, what YouTube and other companies need to be asking themselves is, why are people using ad blockers on our website in the first place? And the answer comes down to the quantity of the ads and the quality of them. Yeah, people who use ad blockers didn't start out. Yet. Yeah, I, I think that if you probably took the random generic Raid Shadow Legend sponsor, and then you compared the click through rate of that, not click through, but like uh, like skip rate of that, and you compared it to like Internet Historian ads, I bet there are more people that don't skip Internet Historian ads. There is absolutely a spectrum. Using them on day one, they browse the internet like normal until mm -hmm. they reached a tipping point where they said enough is enough, and then they went out to find an ad blocker. Many people were yeah. pretty understanding and tolerant of a single pre-roll ad, skippable or not, but then as that number continued to grow, more and more people hit that breaking point and just said, enough is enough, there's got to be a better way. And, and I think that's really kind of what it is. It's kind of like uh, Spotify. Like back in the day, if you wanted to get new music, what you had to do is you actually had to download a... Uh, you, 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 sorry, you didn't have to download. Uh, you had to like go to go to Best Buy, go to Walmart, go to like Circuit City, and actually buy a CD. And like the CD was like seventeen dollars, fifteen dollars, ten dollars, eight dollars, whatever, right? And you would only have the music for that CD. Versus now, you have Spotify, and you pay fifteen dollars, and you can get all of the music that you want. So I think that Spotify is actually, and and I actually like I used to pirate music all the time. Now I never pirate music because Spotify is just such a great service for such a great value. And the value extends beyond just the uh, being able to listen to the music. It's the way the music is stored. It's the multi-device capabilities of it. And just the way that I can share music with other people. I think Spotify is amazing. And I, I think the truth is that, like you compare that with Twitch ads, for example, because like Spotify is an example that like people were getting something for free and then they move to paying for it. How many of you guys? Yeah, convenience is king. You're exactly right. How many of you guys are the exact same as me? You were Pirate Bay enjoyers, you were LimeWire enjoyers, and now you are a Spotify enjoyer. Yeah, lots of people. Okay. So Twitch is the opposite because it's just way overdone. Like Twitch is, it, it, the ads are just insane on Twitch. Like you, you can spend multiple minutes just watching one ad or one block of ads and then you go to another stream and it's the same fucking thing. It's insane. So Turbo, it's like, yeah, you do have Twitch Turbo for that. That's nice. But the problem is that like YouTube, how many of you guys like for me, I spend way more time on YouTube than I do on Twitch. Like I probably watch Twitch streams for less than five minutes a day every day. Straight up. Like, I feel like anything that's really funny from a Twitch stream, I'll probably see it on YouTube anyway. Who gives a fuck? I don't want to watch the B-roll. So, and on YouTube, I don't worry about getting an ad blocker on my mobile phone because it's just one or two skippable ads. It's, you know, 15 seconds. Who cares? It's not a big deal. And if it was the same way on Twitch, I feel like more people wouldn't use ad blocker. But it's a matter of, like, it's it becomes too much. Way too much. Now that we've reached the point where enough people sat together in a room and said... Serving five to ten unskippable ads at a time sounds like a brilliant idea. I have never received this, by the way, on you on YouTube. I have never received seven of ten or one of five ads. The most I have ever received is one is a set of two ads, and one was unskippable and the other one was not. And most of the time it's one skippable ad after five seconds. How could anyone be surprised that more people than ever are using ad blockers? And many people do value their time as a currency, sometimes just as much or even more than money. So as the money, well, of course, their time is a currency. If it wasn't a currency, then the ad, the ad people wouldn't be paying for their, their time. It is a currency. Terry price or the chronological price increases, Think demand about is going to decrease. Yeah. But perhaps the bigger issue at hand for many people is not the quantity of the ads, but the quality of the ads. Most viewers on YouTube aren't receiving average, ordinary, family-friendly ads. You got hustle. Yeah, it's some fucking furry ad or something like that, yeah. Or Mr. Beast scams. Soul bros with their get-rich-quick scams. You got multi-level marketing ads or hidden in their income disclosure oh, statement. It reveals that 99% of people lose money. 
in yeah. games that are deceptively nothing like the advertisement, some of which include blatant copyright infringement to deceive yeah. users. Sketchy websites that make it. Yeah, I think YouTube is really, um, I think they're really dropping the ball with like their, their approval process for ads. I feel like they're really, really dropping the ball recently. Contains spyware and malware and vulgar adult content yeah, to the point guy. where YouTubers such as SaberSpark have talked about them only for him to get in trouble for showing the exact footage that advertisers uh -huh. are still allowed to show. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you are using something such as Sponsor Block, you may have never even heard of various sketchy sponsors such as established titles until mm -hmm. YouTubers such as Scott Schaefer started covering them. We watched that video. And because people aren't asking basic questions such as, is this company allowed to use this IP to advertise? Or if this title were legally binding, why aren't the locals using it? Why aren't there more lords and ladies in Scotland than there are Saudi princes if it's this easy? This means that you are significantly safer by using ad blockers and sponsor blockers, and that's why so many government agencies, such as the FBI, says you should be using them. Now, because bad advertisers usually just get a slap on the wrist instead of- And this is a problem, right? Because like, it, it, it creates a- it creates a completely clean moral justification for using ad block. Because I think that you can make the argument that if everybody used Adblock and nobody saw any ads, then YouTube couldn't exist in the way that it does now. So because of that, I think that you can make an ethical argument that watching ads is part of the social contract that you sign going into uh, watching videos and content on a certain uh, on a certain website. Because if everybody did not do that or sorry if nobody did that then the website could not function like this is just an objective fact the website could not function without advertising so if nobody does advertising then the like that would be it nobody would be able to see anything so if if that's the case i think that many people would probably be like it would be more just it would be harder to justify using an ad blocker and i think that it would be easier to defend YouTube for trying to stop people from using ad blockers because they're doing it in a legitimate way. That's absolutely not the truth. Oh, of course it is. No, it, of course it. It's not even a question. You're delusional. Are you crazy? If you if nobody saw ads, how would the how would these websites make any money? So it's like you can make an ethical argument that using ad blocker could be an unethical behavior. But that argument immediately goes into garbage whenever there are ads that are like these weird porn games with like furry like foxes and shit that are being advertised on Minecraft videos, Mr. Beast scams, scam video games and bullshit like that. Any form of legal or civil penalties, does that mean that you can never expect the company or the people who run these sketchy advertisements to accept responsibility and compensate the viewers when they demonstrate a complete lack of quality control and promote these ads which give them a sense mm -hmm. of legitimacy before the advertisements exploit the viewers. I think that you, I, I actually do think that we can hold YouTube accountable for that. I do think it is YouTube's fault that this is happening. Like it's not like, oh well, you know, shit happens. Like yes, shit does happen, but shit is happening like way too much. Like, I'd be okay if there was, like, every once in a while there's a bad ad. Like, yeah, sure, right? I mean, there's just, it's, that's life. But it's like most of them are bad. Of course not. I'm not an attorney, so take this next bit with a grain of salt, but I do think that this distinct lack of accountability may actually be part of the reason why you don't see companies actively trying to lobby and change the laws to restrict the use of ad blockers. With the current system, there's so many intermediaries between a website and the ads that they run that they all get to point the fingers at each other and play the blame game yeah. whenever something goes awry. If they push too hard to try and change the laws, it could have a cobra effect for them by creating stricter regulations for internet.